These four garages contain one of the finest car collections in the world. Because this is the Franchuk Motor Museum, which is located 40 miles east of Cape Town in one of South Africa's main wine-growing regions. It's home to over 200 cars worth tens of millions of pounds. And the man with the enviable task of looking after them is curator Wayne Harley. Most of the cars here are roadworthy. And I've been told I could take my pick. So what would it be, a Le Mans D-Type? Or my favourite supercar, the McLaren F1? No, I'm going to go South African. So, Wayne, here we have three of South Africa's finest. Shall we start with the oldest? Yes, Steph. I suggest you step over the doors. They're more form than functional. <laughs> OK. This is a Protea. It's powered by a four-cylinder, 1172cc engine, producing a fairly modest 37 brake horsepower. But thanks to its fibreglass body, it weighs just 630 kilograms. And so a brisk 85 miles an hour is possible. Protea? Protea, yes. Yeah, where does that name come from? That's our national flower. Ah. So wait, this is what, 1956? 57. 57. Pro oh, I've got to get going. I'm not going to get up. Oh, I've got a double D clutch. Wait, no, I'll, I'll stop. Oh, I've got to get my double D clutching skills back. This is the very first ever South African made car. Yeah, other than two gentlemen, early 1900s, who made an attempt, Street and Smith, they tried to build a car, but never went into production. The Protea might lack the evocative name of a Ferrari or Porsche, but owning one will make you a member of a far more exclusive club. So how many did they build of these? 14 genuine ones were built, and the company needed to keep going, so they sold an extra six bodies, which were fitted on different oh, running gear. Hold on, lean, 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 lean. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. We right. it. Got it out. Right. And were they built as racing cars or street cars? Most of them went racing. This exact one we're riding in actually raced in the 1959 nine-hour by Mr. Robbins, who was the first owner of it. So how long did the company survive for? They actually kept running until about 59. But by that time, the dark had really taken over. That's a lovely little car. The GSM Dart, which is not to be confused with the British Daimler Dart, had a production run of just 115. Like the Protea, it has a glass fibre body, and some versions, like this one, were fitted with a hard top, complete with distinctive reverse angle rear window. So, wait, this is a GSM Dart. Yeah. And this is the car that virtually killed off the Protea. Well, yeah, the, you know, the Protea basically suffered because this car was just superior in every four. I can tell that straight away. I've got four gears for starters. Okay, well, just remember the first Protea and the first Dart shared. Same engine, same gearboxes oh, in 57. Okay. We're in a much later. This is a Series 3 Dart. <laughs> OK. So this is already running the Cortina 1500 GT motor ah. with a four-speed transmission. Want, how old is this car we're in now? This is a 63. OK. What sort of top speed, what power have we got then in this actual car now? 85 horsepower. I think top speed was in the vicinity of about 100 mile an hour. There's something in between my heels that's rather getting in the way of my that, pressing that's, pedal. That's your chassis. That's the chassis. This car... Well, between my legs. Yeah, between your legs. This car's got a very interesting chassis. It's actually made out of irrigation pipe. That's what they've had in the country. It's a very simple chassis, but it works exceptionally well. Get some power into it. 40, oh, that's 4,000 reps. I'm doing 40 miles an hour. It feels like I'm doing about 90 miles an hour. 50 miles an hour, fourth gear. We're into liftoff. What sort of brakes have I got? <laughs> You've got disc on the front and drum at the back. Oh, we're really getting modern now. But in 1971, a truly quick car came along, the Ford Piranha. Based on a Capri 3000 XL, it was specially homologated for the South African market by a man called Basil Green, so the locals could go racing. And Basil certainly didn't mess about when it came to fitting something serious under the hood. You've got a Ford Mustang 289 cubic inch V8 making... What's that in litres now? I always forget. Uh, it's around about five. A five, five litre V8. Five litre V8 um, making about 250 brake horsepower. They were built only in two colours, this yellow and an orangey colour called Piri Piri, which is famous in South Africa for a type of chicken which comes from from uh, Mangano. So you can have a Piri Piri Piranha then, could exactly, you? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> 
and the Piranha certainly performs well with a 0 to 60 time of 6.7 seconds and a top speed of over 140 miles an hour. In fact, a well known South African racing driver, Bob Altoff, managed to lap the famous Kyle Army race circuit just 15 seconds slower than a Formula One car of its day. So, where were these piranhas built? The piranhas were built in Port Elizabeth and then shipped to Basil Green in Johannesburg and then fitted with the piranha modification. But how many did they make then? 550. It's got torque at all. I don't think the brakes are quite as good as the engine, though. That's what worries me, Wayne. <laughs> what an amazing day. What a privilege to come to this amazing Franchuk Motor Museum. Not to just see, but to drive some of the forefathers of the South African motoring industry. What a shame they're not still around today. It's obviously heavy and you've got to you've got to control the mass. So you've got to be